All information contained in this podcast is general in nature and does not consider your individual circumstances. You should consider the appropriateness of this information with regards to your individual objectives, financial situation, and needs. Welcome to Sharing More Than The Sheets, a podcast to help you and your partner make better financial and lifestyle decisions so that you can both focus on the things that you love. I'm your host, Michael Curry, financial planner, green thumb, husband, and just dad. This segment is called Michael's Magic Moment. It's my opportunity to play a little snippet from one of our previous episodes, which resonated with our listeners that I received feedback from, or I felt really had an impact on some people's lives. Hope you enjoy. As an advisor, I regularly talk to mothers that take career breaks, and it could be for children, it could be a transition in their lives. And... A common theme that I regularly see that is that it's it's a lot easier said than done because changing careers, um, changing routines, changing the, the, like the dynamics of someone's life is very very difficult, um, especially especially for a mother, for example, and um, the the transitions and the changes that a mother goes through. Today, I've invited Lily Aid onto the show. She, Lily is a certified career practitioner. She's the founder of the Professional Edit and launch mama. And she is literally the perfect person to to have on the show to talk about this topic. Uh, Lily, thank you so much for, for joining us. Thank you. It's yeah, excellent to be on your podcast, Michael. Very excited. Yeah. Uh, likewise. Like honestly, as soon as I saw exactly what you did, I was like, yes, like this is like, I've been wanting to talk about this for so long because as I said, I, I'm, I, you know, I talk to mums all the time and, mm. um, and I can help them as far as, you know, to a certain extent as an advisor talking about money and managing things, yeah. but there's so much more to it. And be, before we get into it, can maybe for those that haven't heard about you um, or even about um, the professional edit or launch mama, um, and you have a podcast as well, um, but for those that haven't heard about you and what you actually do, can you maybe give a little mm. bit of a, a rundown? Perfect. Yep, absolutely. So I am the founder of the professional edit and launch mama. So the professional edit is for counseling and coaching services for professionals of all different levels, as well as students. And then most recently I started launch mama, which is focused on career counseling and coaching services for mums. So launch mama is something that, you know, hits quite close to home with me being a mum uh, of one myself and I think the whole reason and purpose for starting Launch Mama was because of my own experiences, feeling very lost and confused after becoming a mum about my career, you know, the direction I take, how's this going to impact me and my family. Yeah, it's it's a massive, a massive time, a massive transition for for mums in particular. And Yeah, my whole purpose with Launch Mama is to help mums return to work with confidence and discover a new career pathway that's very much aligned with their values because values shift when you become a mum, aligned with their genius. You know, what are they here on this earth to do from, you know, a very strong skill set perspective? You know, what are some of your awesome working geniuses? What are you best at? And then also finding something that aligns with their sole purpose. What brings meaning into their life? It's, yeah, it's awesome. I love it. It's, yeah, Launch Mama is very, very special to me. It would be because, I mean, as a, you know, career professional, right, as a mm. literally, technically a certified career pro- professional, your job was has always been to talk to people about their careers. And yes. I'm sure you used to talk to people that used to do one job. Maybe they're an accountant and they wanted, yeah. they were sick of their job and they want something different. And you sort of did that. But I, you, I think you, 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 if it, you, you sort of explained it really well when you said that when you became a mum, it became a lot closer to you because mm. suddenly it's something, not just A, you could relate to it, but secondly, there are so many more elements to it. It's not someone's like, oh, I don't really know what I like doing. I sort of like this job. I'm good mm. at computers, but I don't know. It's more like, hey, I've been out of the workforce for like five years or two years or one year or whatever it may be. I need to transition. And there are so yeah. many more 
elements to it, isn't it? It's not just skills based. It's it, it's emotional. It's um, routine, as I said earlier. Yeah, yeah. There's so many different factors and elements, and you're right. It's it was for me the career coaching and counselling aspect just felt so natural for me and. I didn't mention this before, but prior to being a mum, I was working in various different roles that included, you know, human resource management, organizational psychology, organizational development. So I've always been sort of in that realm of work, constantly coaching, you know, leadership executives, uh, you know, professionals of all different levels, you know, those who don't love their role, those who do love their role and they want to upskill. So it's always been that sort of theme of work that I've that I've operated in, it was just when I became a mom, it was like, okay, do I want to go back to that real intense corporate grind that I was, you know, doing before I became a mom because it was such a big part of my identity or do I really just consider what are the things that I absolutely love doing that I know that I'm really good at, that is my working geniuses that, you know, I'm born on this earth to do. And how do I make that into a business? How do I, yeah, how do I give back to those who I want to give back to? And for me, it was it was mums at that particular time. So, yeah. And, and do, you, do you come across a lot of mothers that just feel like it's too hard as well, that feel like it's, oh, yeah. you know, yeah. like, I mean, I could just imagine it's it, not, not just mothers, but primarily mothers because, you know, mother mm. normally you know, literally goes from, you know, potentially being in an office every day, being around people, career progression, you, you know, after doing university and study mm-hmm. and whatever it may be to suddenly being at home with a child and then having to go back out there again. Like, do you, do you feel like they think maybe they get discouraged or maybe they think it's the hill's yeah. too hard to climb? hundred percent. And if you're anything like me, which I, I think most mothers and you know, it's not just the mums, it's the primary carers. So it could be the dads and partners as well, you know, but I feel like when you are the primary carer, you're the one that it's at, you know, that's at home and and raising the child on your own. It just becomes this new identity that you're not used to. And yeah, if you were anything like me, my career was everything. You know, it was what I, I knew best, what people knew me as or how I thought people knew me as, you know, how I portrayed myself was you know, this corporate professional working for organizations and workplace behavior and, you know, HR coaching and all that sort of stuff. So for me, that was my everything. And there was part of me that always knew that I wanted to be a mum. And when Tony and I, just Tony, my husband, and I discussed what that's going to look like, you know, I always thought, oh, I kind of want to stay home for the first few years or maybe a little bit longer because, that's really important to me and I know I'm going to love it and it's just very, very exciting. And then when I had Freddie, while I loved it and, you know, being at home with him and watching him develop and grow was just so fulfilling, there was a part of me, like an old me that I miss so badly and I went through this real grieving process of my old identity And that's that whole moving into this matrescence period and going through that grief of the old you but embracing and accepting the new you. And, you know, when you're sleep deprived and your hormones are all out of whack and, you know, you're a new time mom and just really figuring it out, it just can have this major mental and emotional impact on on you and it's very hard to accept this new identity. So I think... And when I think back to when I started the professional edit, because that was my first business, I was going through all of that and I was trying really hard to tie in this career identity with who I who I was now. And yeah, it's it's a yeah, it's a really hard, hard time. And all of the women that I speak to, my friends, family, most of them all go through this shift. And the ones who don't feel it as much are probably the ones who didn't have their identity closely tied to their career. So becoming mum was that that new primary identity. Does that make sense? It, it does because yeah. cause you're right. Because to, to some mothers, um, their career, and obviously there's no right or wrong, you know, yeah. uh, I guess, 
um, approach on this. But obviously, if, yeah, for some for some women, I'm sure they don't really care about career. Like it's important to them, but to them, yeah. it's, you know, they're happy to be a full time mum, and it's what they've always wanted. For example, yeah, yep. um, just like there are some men that probably don't want to work, and same thing, they prefer yeah. they don't really care about their career, and they they rather, mm-hmm. you know, do something else. Um, so I, don't, I, I, I also don't want to tie this obviously straight to gender. Um, yeah. But then, yeah, of course, if if t- to a woman, the they've worked so hard to build a career, mm-hmm. and the career is something to them, and it's something valuable to them. Yeah, that's really important, hundred percent. Because you mentioned, you know, embracing the new you. Because mm. I guess you go through that twice, don't you? You sort of embrace the new you of having a child, yeah. having to deal with that and being off work. Then you have to embrace the new you again of being yeah. a working mum. Yes. Um, yeah. And it's it's interesting because I never thought that I would grieve the career me. Like I just – I didn't realise how much I loved that part of me or how much emphasis I placed on that identity until, yeah, until I had become a mum. And I think it was also me being thrown into this really uncertain, unstable environment because, you know, when you're a mum, there's no handbook. You don't go and do some training and, you know, study four years at university to become a mum. So, you you go into this new role of mum and it's just like, what is this? (laughs) And you can listen to your family, you know, you can read all of the stuff online, you can listen to podcasts but you're never fully prepared for it. And I think it was the uncertainty for me that made me feel really uncomfortable. And I think that that's probably the same for a lot of the other mums. It's just this, what the heck? I can't have this routine that I'm structuring it. It's very much influenced by my child who, you know, chops and changes every month. You know, I was very keen to get out of the house by nine o'clock in the morning, but, you know, today it's 11 o'clock. There's just so many changing parts. And I think that's what really impacts our confidence, our, yeah, our, our sense of self. Yeah, there's so many, so many different factors. And if there's a mother listening to this that's maybe, let's say, off work at the moment, Mm-hmm. And probably thinking the same thing. Okay, what can I do to transition? Um, yeah, you know, to, to, to back to work. Or what What are some things that I can start doing now? Mm-hmm. Um, what are some just basic? And I, I know it depends on every circumstance is different. But what are some basic tips or some strategies that you can yeah. you can give? Is it, is it doing a bit of part time study, just reading up on things, getting it, or is it just really yeah. focusing on mum life? And then when she's ready then starting the transition or a combination of the two. Yeah. Look, I think if you – yeah, it can be overwhelming really, when you don't know where to be, start and yeah. it's like, ah, what do I do? And, it can be. Yeah. And um, I know this is where you come in, of course, and this is where it helps for someone yeah. to sit down with you one-on-one. But I guess I'm just trying to think of some general some general things or, or maybe some things definitely not to do or some things you definitely yeah. should do if you yeah, have to sort look- of pick one or two. Or three. Absolutely. Yeah. So look, I think preparation is really key. So if you are a mum who is considering returning to work, you're sort of at that point where you've been through that postpartum period, you have arranged with the employee that you were going to take 12 months off and you're sort of getting to that nine month mark. You're feeling a little bit more confident. There's some rhythm that's happening. It's a little bit easier for you to you know, spend a few hours away from your child or, you know, just things are feeling a little bit good. That's probably when I would start some conversations with the employer around your return to work. What's that going to look like? And you yourself being open and honest in how you're feeling about that. So, I think some of the biggest concerns mums have when they return to work is fulfilling these promises that they made before they take maternity leave or sorry, before they commenced maternity leave and they might feel that I'm not ready to come back after 12 months or, you know, I told my employer that I'd, I'd be back full time after 12 months off but I just can't see how, how full time is going to work with our family situation at the moment or I can't get five days at daycare, you know, all of those things that you might not take into consideration before you go on maternity leave before you're making all of these promises. So I always encourage mums who are 
in that boat experiencing those feelings or experiencing those sort of situations to have open and honest conversations with their employer around what's going to work best for them as a mum and for their family but also taking into consideration the needs of the business as well and that's where the employer will would give their perspective. The really great thing about these new flexible leave days that have been introduced by the government is that a primary carer or, you know, both parents actually are entitled to this, but from the perspective of a mum or the primary carer, they can utilise 100 unpaid leave days within the first two years of their child's uh, birth or, or placement if they're adopted. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a free 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au. I think preparing with your employer, what's that going to look like? You could stagger your approach in your return to work. So instead of going back you know, straight into four days per week or three days per week, you might decide to utilise your flexible leave days and only return twice a week for the next, you know, four or five months. And again, it's an entitlement for people to, to take, so they can use those. Um, but I think, yeah, preparation and having those open and honest conversations with your employer is super important. That'll also help ease any sense of anxiety as well, because, you know, changes happen quite a lot in organizations within 12 months. You know, not much is happening at home other than, you know, you learning learning all about your new baby in this new situation. But, you know, in a workplace, a year goes so fast and so many changes happen. People leave, people join. So, I think keeping in touch with your employer um, you know, when you're feeling safe and ready to start thinking about things outside of this life of mum, understanding, yeah, what are the changes? What am I walking walking into or, you know, coming back to? That's also going to help any sense of overwhelm and, and yeah, anxieties that can, can pop up. Yeah, and the other thing I think of as well, and this, this, is, some, this is literally advice I've given mums, that have taken time off work. Yeah. So I'd love to know, I'd love to see what your take on it is. But mine, I've always said to not feel like they have to go back to what they did. So don't yes. feel like an obligation or don't feel like yeah. you have to go back to that employer or you have to just because you promised them or you, or maybe mentally you, you've envisioned mm. yourself being back. Don't, like, don't feel like you have to. Or if you yeah. did a nine to five office job, for example, don't feel like you have to return to something like yeah. that. Maybe start a business, maybe look at another job, maybe work at, you know, do something that's closer to home or near the childcare mm. center or, or whatever. So th- I think that's probably been a big one because a lot of mothers, they, they take time off work. They, like what you said, they sort of have these promises that they feel like they need to fulfill. Now, whether it's yeah. a promise they've promised themselves or something they've promised their employer yeah. or their co-workers or their partner, having these promises and sort of being restricted by that and feeling, okay, this is my only option. This is all I can do. And I think mm. I'm guessing that's where it helps when they talk to you because you probably look at that and you think, well, hold on a second. You know, I know this is probably what you think you want to do, but have you thought about X, Y, and Z? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Sense of obligation is a massive thing that comes out in a lot of the conversations that I have with with mums in particular. It's this, oh, but I promised them that I would go back these manner days. Or it's this, oh look, I, you know, I, I don't think I love that industry anymore, or that role anymore, but I told them that I would come back and I know they're already running lean and it's just going to be really hard for the business. So it's just these, it's these senses of obligation that can overwhelm us. But I think we feel so obligated because we're just so concerned about our career identity. Um, and this is where I, I sort of coach them in, in changing their mindset about that because just because you've taken time off work doesn't mean you're any less of a skilled, you know, for example, accountant, you know, who's got all of the qualifications that they need to operate amazingly in their role. You know, it doesn't matter that you've taken time out of your career. You are still that person. It's just, it's a confidence thing. You know, it's when you're feeling really confident, you can advocate for yourself 
a lot easier. You can think a little bit more objectively, you know, bigger picture thinking, you know, this, yes, you know, my career provides money, but it doesn't provide me happiness. So how do I change that mindset too? So there's so many, yeah, there's so many different things that, that are running through our minds, but absolutely don't feel obligated. Um, at the end of the day, if you're happy, your children will be happy and your family will be happy. And you can just pick up on the energy at home when somebody is feeling unhappy. I mean, Freddie, Freddie picks up on that so easily. Tony and I come home from, you know, we might have a, a shitty day at work or, you know, something like that where you know, something's annoyed us. He can pick up on that energy. So I'm just very conscious of that. And I know, I know a lot of mums are very conscious of that too. So it sort of starts that, that process of, okay, I know that I want to be doing something different, but I just don't know what that is. And yeah, that's sort of where we, we jump into the career discovery stuff. Yeah, because what's the alternative, really? I'm just thinking if, if someone doesn't do these things, if they don't manage expectations, talk to their employers, mm. ask them what they want to do, speak to someone like you, the alternative really is they're just going to go back to what they were doing and it's yeah. probably going to create um, mental, emotional, and potentially financial stress yeah. later on anyway. Um, and I see it like, for example, um, an example, this is very different, but – same but diff- different, but same but similar. Yeah. Like a client, for example, that takes time off uh, medically and they go on income protection, for example, mm. and they're off work and they're recovering. Statistically, those that actually return to work when they're ready are more likely to recover, whereas those that return to work sooner than they should or they return to the wrong roles are more likely to take a lot more time off after that again. Yeah. So I feel like, yeah, it's either think of these things or the alternative is going to be if you just sort of – go with the flow and just force yourself to do something you're not comfortable doing. Yeah. It, it is going to cause a lot more damage than good. Absolutely. Um, and look, I think it's it's important to acknowledge the financial impact of one house, you know, going from two income earners to one income earner and with interest rates and just cost of living is is through the roof now. So I understand there is that financial stressor of if I don't return to work, this is the impact it can have. And I would say to those who are in that boat, making sure that you prepare with your employer and having those open and honest conversations because, like you said before, if you return to work and you've got all these feelings of resentment or this uncertainty or anything like that, it can just create and lead to burnout. You want to be going into a situation with, yeah, with your feelings and, and thoughts all out on the table so that the employer sort of knows where you're at. Yeah, and you can just ease into it rather than just going head first and not really not really feeling comfortable doing so. Yeah. And if I can summarize a lot of that in a sentence, I'd probably say is to be as honest as possible with yourself and with your employer yeah. and your partner. Because if you're honest with yourself, you, you really – telling it, look, is this what I really want? If you're honest with your employer, you tell them, look, this is how I feel. And if you're honest with your partner, the same thing. And that way you don't feel pressured. And I feel like if you just if you do those three things with the right guidance, of course, um, you know, and I, I say the right guidance, I'm not just saying that because I'm interviewing you and I'm saying <laughs> everyone should see Lily. But honestly, as an as an advisor, there is nothing I can tell you now, there's nothing more powerful than having a third party, having an outsider's 100%. perspective. When I talk yeah. to people about their money, I'll talk to people that are so good with money. Probably so I've got some clients that are more intelligent than me when it comes to finances. Yeah. But they need someone there to be there from an outsider's perspective, to take emotion out of the whole thing, to and to provide an unbiased opinion or guidance. Um, and I feel like having someone like you really would help because, you know, you might mention something that that person hasn't, you know, that mum hasn't even thought about before. It's like, wow, actually, that's a really good point. I didn't even think of that, you know. So, exactly. Yeah, it's um, it's yeah, it's it's massive. And and the other thing for me, like, I'm just this is me now being really positive which we always should be in any situation, <laughs> I think. Um, but I see this as opportunity for change. Like if you think about it, like if you're, if someone's working full time in a job, no break, it's really hard to take the jump into a different career or to set up mm. a business or close a business and start working for someone. Yeah. Um, but when you 
take time off work, whether it's for medical reasons or for, for having children or whatever it may be. Like it, this is an opportunity for change. I see. I see it as it's yeah. it's literally the perfect moment to unless finances are are hard. Or that's different, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's an op- it's the, the probably has will has never been and will probably ne- never be a better time to make a transition into something different. Hundred percent. You've got all of the time. I mean. Look, mum life is hectic as, but you know, you, you're in a different, you're in a different mindset. You've got that time to just sit with yourself, slow down and learn a little bit more about yourself. So you do have the time to read about other uh, industries or interests or even pick up a hobby if, you know, you know, Bub's in a, a really good routine and they're, they're napping and you're kind of on top of housework and stuff around the house that you, you know, can, can consume you during those nap times. You can start dabbling into some of those, those hobbies and interests and just learning a little bit more about yourself. I, I'd learned a lot about myself during the first, let's say probably the first two to three years of being a mum. Um, and I'm still learning learning more about myself. Um, but it's a fantastic time to consider alternative career pathways if, yeah, if things aren't feeling the best or the idea of going back to work isn't this great feeling. Yeah, it should feel it should feel good returning to work if it's in the right role and in the right time. And, and let's be honest, I mean, you know, I've got three kids. Most people that listen to this would know I've got three kids. But yeah. as a parent, not just a mother, even father, but especially a mother, like having kids, you literally you literally become deprived of the basic necessities of life. 100%. So it is, you know, so sometimes it's not as easy to do these things, but it's, yeah. you know, when you've got that time, it's, you know, if you could, if you could make the time, I guess, mm. um, you know, to sort of like what you said, dabble into different things. Yeah. Yeah. It's 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 interesting because it's kind of like your and I know that the brain shifts a lot from the moment you're pregnant and you know forever for for women um but there are these there's parts of the brain that that shifts and grows and I think that is probably what's directly linked to these thoughts and feelings of okay what else is out there for me or I want to learn a little bit more about this. There's almost like this eagerness uh, and there's, we know that there is this stronger capacity in, in the maternal brain for learning during that time. And although we are sleep deprived and cognition might be slow, it's just like this instinctual need and want to learn uh, and explore and discover. It's interesting there's a few it studies is. on it. I can I'll send them through to you. Yeah, that, that, that would be good actually, because um, I could share that with a few people. Yeah. Um, and uh, and and Lily, uh, can I ask as well if anyone wants to get in contact with you to to talk about these things um, and to, as I said, get that guidance that we sort of have been talking about. What would you say would be the best way for them to do that? So, look, you could send me an email straight up. So it's lily.ed at theprofessionaledit.com and that's for both the professional edit and launch mama services. I for launch mama, I'm mainly all over Instagram. So if you have Instagram, you can follow and connect with me um, there. My Instagram's launchmama underscore. And then of course my website which is www.theprofessionaledit.com. Again, if it's for launch mama, there's a, a tab, a page on my website specifically for launch mama. And yeah, we've got an awesome program that's that's coming up uh, in January, which will be all about the career discovery piece, which I'm super excited to launch. Sweet. And how do people find out about that? So again, Just to follow Instagram. you, I guess, on socials. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, follow me on socials. Uh, you can send me an email, and I can send you a link to our wait list. Maybe I could send you the link, Michael, and you could share it in the the show notes if people are interested. But yeah, Definitely. it's gonna be good. Yeah. Definitely. No, that sounds good. That sounds exciting. It's um, because I, I know this is something you're passionate about. So if it's something you're launching, I know it's going to be good. Oh, so yes. thank you. <laughs> um, and lastly, I like to finish all my episodes off with a dad joke. Okay. And Love this, it. This, this is sort of um, I mean, it's ironic that I'm doing a dad joke on an episode talking about mums getting back to work. But <laughs> th- th- this is like a you know, this is a parent joke in a way. It's it's about yeah. exercise. But every morning, I announce that I'm going running. 
but then I don't. Um, it's a running joke. <laughs> Was Love right. it. That was, it was, that was right. pretty good. That was pretty good. Uh, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> this is episode 150 something. We're st- I'm struggling with dad jokes now because I've sort of mentioned all the ones that I love. So, you know what? Anyone listening to this, if you could actually message me some dad jokes, I'll literally make a library of it and that would be – I'll even give you a shout out as to who sent it to me. That's so if, good. If it's, if it's half decent, so please. But, Lily, Love thank it. you so much for your time. I appreciate thank it you. so, so much. Um, and I encourage you, yeah, anyone listening to this, to just – touch base, hear more about it. And um, worst case, even just listen to your podcast, you know, if yeah. you're not ready to touch base now, like yeah. it's, your podcast yeah. seems right up the sally. It's 100%. literally called the Launch Mama, isn't it? Yeah, Launch Mama podcast. So, yeah. the podcast is all about me interviewing mums who are working in different industries. So, the idea is to help mums who might be on maternity leave or they've gone back to work or they're thinking about – starting a family the idea is to give them some sort of understanding of what maternity leave returning to work looks like within a particular industry and just some tips that are industry related or even personal tips that this particular working mum found really useful with her return to work and it's those returning to their paid employer it's mums who decided to start their own business or they were business owners before they took maternity leave so so much information on those on those podcast episodes. And I guess there's nothing like listening to real life examples. And- 100%. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, again, thank you so much, Lily, for your time. Thanks, um, Michael. means so much. And um, I can't wait to see more of, you know, I can't wait to discover more of what you do in the future yeah. and, and for this program as well. Yeah. Looking forward to the growth. It's, yeah, it's something that I've put so much – time and effort into but it doesn't feel like that because i just love it it's yeah amazing (laughs) that's awesome i could say it's you could tell you can tell honestly it's it's very obvious in the execution even in the things that you do and even the quotes you put on linkedin i love them oh thanks so it's awesome thank you keep up the amazing work thanks michael thanks for joining us on sharing more than the sheets please make sure you subscribe to be updated with future episode releases and feel free to share this episode with any friends or family that you think it might benefit. Please visit us at sharingmorethanthesheets.com.au to submit questions or requests for future podcast topics. These podcasts have been brought to you by Better Financial Planning Australia. To book a 15-minute phone chat, visit betterfinancialplanning.com.au.